Hello, Keith Kaiser here with another lesson from God's Word. We're studying Luke's life of Christ. Today we're in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 5 and verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12 of Luke, Luke 5, 12. It says, And it happened when he was in a certain city, that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew, into the wilderness and prayed. Uh, this is a famous incident of one of the great sign miracles that the Lord Jesus did of healing a man who was a leper. And not just described as a leper, but Luke says he was full of leprosy. Now, Acts uh, refers to Luke as a physician. He was a doctor by training. And so with a specific medical eye. He looks at this man's condition, and when he says he's full of leprosy, you almost can hear him say, ah, oh, it's beyond our medical science. It's beyond my healing powers, and I can't do anything for this man. But here was the Lord Jesus, and this man who was full of leprosy, he saw Jesus and fell on his face and implored him. Now, often we see the Lord Jesus in the Gospels coming to individuals. He's seeking individuals. We think about him in John chapter 4, coming to the well at Sychar to speak to the woman that was coming there to gather water. The Lord went there intentionally, put himself in her pathway, and began a dialogue by asking a question so that he could preach to her and lead her to himself. But the emphasis here is on this man and his response to the Lord Jesus. First, that he saw Jesus. Now, Imagine this man, what's implied here is that he knew he had a need. He knew he had a problem. He knew he was ill, very, very sick, we might say. And that's the first step, you know. When the Lord came and saw the man in John chapter 5 who had been paralyzed for 38 years, he asked him what would seem to us almost a ludicrous question. He said, do you want to be made well? But that's a very good question because there are a lot of lepers and a lot of lame people and a lot of blind and deaf and who knows who else that lived in the time of the Lord Jesus that likely never came to Jesus, that discounted his claims, that weren't interested. And uh, we know even when he came to Nazareth, as I referred a few lessons ago, that he came to Nazareth and could do many, uh, do few miracles rather there because of their lack of faith. They weren't interested in Jesus doing miracles. They weren't looking to him as the Lord to intervene on their behalf. But this man knew his condition. He knew he was full of leprosy. It was a terminal disease, of course. It was also a defiling disease. And so anything this man would have touched, sat upon, worn, would have been considered ceremonially unclean. And if he was going through one of those periods of contagion, where he was contagious, in other words, uh, then it could actually lead to somebody else contracting the same disease. So he was an outcast, a real pariah. In fact, the Old Testament tell us, tells us that when lepers came into polite society, they had to cover the lip and say, unclean, unclean. That's the background to Isaiah's vision in Isaiah 6, when in the year that King Uzziah died, Uzziah was the leper king. He was a leper because he did what God told him, uh, what God had not asked him to do. He usurped his position. He was to be the civil leader, and he tried to become the religious leader. In other words, he tried to do the job of the priests, the sons of Aaron. And they were of the tribe of Levi. Kings were of the tribe of Judah. So he tried to cross over into a realm that for him was illicit. God said, that's not your sphere of service. And he struck him with leprosy, which Leviticus has several chapters that talk about leprosy. And leprosy is an excellent picture of sin because it spreads and it corrodes and it taints and it corrupts and ultimately it kills. This is what sin does. And this man was full of leprosy. So he knew his grave condition. Now, secondly, when he saw Jesus, 
he also knew who the Savior was. He called him Lord. And he recognized that being Lord, this wasn't just an honorific or him being polite. But he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So there is faith here in who the Lord is and what he can do. If he's really Messiah, if he's really the Lord, if he's really the sent one, sent by the Father into this world, then he can cleanse me. Even though men would tell me my disease is incurable, even though this deep-seated malady seems like it's going to be with me continually till it kills me, I know that the Lord can heal me. And so he comes to the Lord. Notice how he comes. He fell on his face. So he prostrates himself before the Lord and implored him. He's begging him. He comes, in other words, as one who submits to the Lord, as one who acknowledges the Lord is greater. He comes as a suppliant. He is asking the Lord to do something for him. He is pleading for the Lord's mercy and grace, for the Lord to do something to him that he may not demand, that he cannot say he has every right to. He comes basically acknowledging that he has no rights of his own, that he's just going to throw himself at the feet of the Lord and beg for mercy, and based on his character, if the Lord wants to, he can make him clean. So he understands the identity and the power of the Lord, and the Lord is capable of doing this. Where he got this understanding, we're not exactly told, but it doesn't take much imagination to think that as the stories went round of the Lord Jesus healing other people, that this man's imagination began to go, and he thought, you know, if he could heal lepers over there and lame people over there and others in other places, he could surely do the same thing for me. And so he comes to him and says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, so many people never do what this man did. So many people never look at themselves and their condition and say, you know what? Just as he was physically a leper, I'm spiritually a leper. I have sin in me. And that sin is corrupting. That sin corrodes uh, my thoughts and my actions. It, it taints everything I do. That even when I try to do something good, it's spoiled by my sin. I understand what Isaiah means. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Many people don't even look at themselves and come to that self-awareness, that understanding that they are sold under sin, that they are a fleshly person destined to die, and not just die physically, but spiritually, to suffer the second death of being separated from the Lord for eternity in the lake of fire, to suffer the condemnation of God, his righteous judgment against our sin that results in us being overtaken by his wrath. They don't realize that. They don't realize the gravity of their situation or the peril that they're in. And yet this man realized it. Now, what did it move him to do? Well, it med him, led him to go to the Lord Jesus. You know, some people do realize how messed up they are. They look at their lives and they say, oh, I'm messed up. I'm a bad person. I've got addictions. I've got evil thoughts. I've got lusts. I've got things that I can't break or stop doing or change. Or I've got good things that I'd like to do. And those are the very things I don't practice. I understand that I am not what I ought to be. But the problem is they don't go to the Lord Jesus. They go to self-help gurus. They go to 12-step plans. They go to Eastern religion. They go to anything and everything except faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This man realized his desperate condition and realized it's not anybody else that can help me but the Son of God, the Creator, the Messiah who's come down to this earth. That Savior can help me. He can save me. It's only a question if he's willing. Now, I want to tell you, there's not any sinner anywhere on earth that is too bad for the Lord to save. There's not anyone who's lived a life of rebellion and being a wastrel and just squandering every opportunity and squandering their health and their mind and their resources. There's not any of you so dissipated and bad that the Lord won't save you because that's how he is. He's a saving God. And Paul said of him, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And, you know, anyone who's been saved will admit the same thing. You know, I deserved hell. I deserved the judgment of God. I could not save myself. I'm not better than anybody else. God didn't save me because I'm better 
God saved me because I'm worse, perhaps. God saved me because I couldn't save myself. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. But I came to the Lord Jesus and asked him to save me. And the wonderful thing is the Lord is willing and able to save. Not just able to save. The man had no doubt of that. But he's also willing. Now look at how he does it. Look at verse 13. Then he put out his hand and touched him. Now the Lord did many miracles merely at a word. After all, he is the God through whom all things were created. And how did he create things? Well, Genesis 1 says, And God spoke, Let there be light. And there was light. And God said, uh, Let the earth and the, the land and the waters be separated. Let the waters uh, teem with life and the land be filled with life and so forth. So in other words, by God's verbal fiat, by him just speaking the word, then things came into existence. And that powerful word is able to speak and bring things that are not to come into being and to actually exist. That's how God is. But he didn't just speak here. You know, other places he heals the centurion servant by just saying the word. He heals the nobleman's son in John 4 by just saying the word. But here he reaches out and touches him. Now to anybody else, that would be the last thing you'd want to do. That would be the most repulsive thing. To touch a man that is full of leprosy. I mean, just the icky factor of thinking about that, of touching someone who is so repulsive looking, so eaten up by a loathsome disease. And what's more, to think about the fact that it could be contagious. It could infect the Lord Jesus. And now more than ever, in these days of COVID-19, people are thinking about infection and taking care not to be exposed to the virus. Well, the Lord Jesus didn't fear exposure because that disease could not cling to him. And even when we think about the ceremonial defilement that leprosy pictured, that the Lord Jesus was not defiled. He was never made dirty by sinners coming to him. Rather, cleansing flowed from the Lord Jesus to sinners. And he said, I am willing, be cleansed. Now notice, immediately the leprosy left him, verse 13 says. It wasn't a process. It didn't take a while. It wasn't, oh, if you just have enough faith, have more faith, pray more, fast more, do many good works, and then I'll be able to heal you. No, the Lord was willing and able. He said, I am willing, and he touched the man, be cleansed. Who knows how long it had been since that man had felt a human touch. And certainly not a gracious touch of love that would willingly reach out and touch him the way he did. And yet from the Lord flowed that cleansing. Immediately the leprosy left him. Now, interestingly, verse 14 says he charged him to tell no one. Again, the Lord's not interested in publicity for publicity's sake. He was never one to make a spectacle. Rather, the word was going to be preached in certain confines in certain ways. And even in doing this great sign, he was going to do this in conformity to the law. Moses gave the law, God gave it to Moses, and Moses gave it to Israel. And Leviticus told a leper what to do in the event that the Lord healed them. The former leper was now to go to the priest and offer a sacrifice, testifying to the fact that God had cleansed them. And think of what would have happened if that man had done that. The priest would naturally ask, well, how did it come to be that God healed you? And he'd say, well, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, he's Messiah. He's the one I called the Lord. And he reached out and touched me. And you know what? Leprosy didn't spread to him. Nothing happened to him, but something happened to me. I was cleansed. He touched me and oh, the joy that filled my soul, he might say. And think of what a testimony that would have been to the priests. What's more, it would have shown the Lord Jesus as a one who was born of woman, born under the law as Galatians 4.4 4 says of him. But instead, what this man did, he went out and told people. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now, Luke doesn't specifically say it was the man who went out and proclaimed it. Mark 1, for example, tells us that. But we see the result from Luke here, that the crowds come. And what does this result in? Does this result in the word of God spreading better? No. What it results in 
is the Lord having to go out to more incommodious places, out into the desert lands. And the Lord withdrew often and prayed. And, you know, today people think, well, whatever we have to do to get people in to hear the word, you know, whatever, if we need to use rock music, if we need to use country music, if we need to use drama, if we need to use uh, all kinds of tricks to get people's attention and to entertain them and bring them to hear the word that way, that's what we must do. But that's exactly what the Lord Jesus didn't do. Even legitimate power of God, the working of miracles, the Lord wouldn't do that gratuitously. He wouldn't do that merely to draw a crowd. And he certainly wouldn't traffic in sensationalism. The Lord was interested in people coming to him who were serious, people who knew their deep need, people like that leper himself who knew they were full of leprosy, who knew they were full of sin. And they come to the Lord Jesus in desperation, seeking salvation. So the Lord goes about his mission very specifically and wanting to heal people, but wanting to do it God's way and God's time, that he might uh, lead people to the gospel that he was preaching. And that's what the sign miracles were always meant to do, to picture who it is that's come, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and that he's able and willing to save. So if you've never come to him, may you come to him. And like this man, may you prostrate yourself before the Lord and say, save me. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And the Lord indeed can make us clean. First John 1, 7 says, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So may you know the deep cleansing that the Lord does when he saves someone, when someone passes from death unto life by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you come to him today. Thank you for listening.